All right, well, we're going to get started. Hopefully, you're all here for the Coyote presentation. If not, that's what you're in for. Uh, my name is Lara Miller. I'm the Natural Resources Extension Agent for Pinellas County. How many of you guys are familiar with the Extension Service by a show of hands? Yay, that's more than usual. <laughs> so we are here to learn about the coyote. We're going to be going over some of the history about the coyote, how it came to be here and where it is today, some basic biology, the costs and benefits of having the coyote here, um, human conflicts, which is probably a lot of what you're interested in, and then solutions to those human conflicts. And I've set objectives for you all. So we're going to learn about how coyotes came to Florida. Again, the basic biology, how to identify if you have a coyote visiting your yard, and then actions that you can take to hopefully avoid those negative interactions. So let's hop right into the history here. I hope I'm not blocking anyone's view. Where did the coyotes come from? They're here in Florida, if you're not aware. That's why I am doing this presentation. But they came from what we call the American West. They came from out west. And they have largely been able to expand their range because of the eradication of the wolves, which was a top competition for the coyote as well as a predator. And you can see on the right, those are actually professionals that were hired to kill out the wolves. And so with the wolves gone, the coyotes were able to expand their range naturally. So you can see here on this map, the orange area is their historical range, which you can see is in the west. And over time, the kind of the lighter the shades is the more recent. So you can see most recently they've made it out to the east and, and southeast for us. So it's been since the early to late 1900s that they've made it here. So they've actually been here for quite a while. Another thing that has contributed to how they have been able to get here, aside from their competition now being gone, is the changing of the landscape. So coyotes aren't really fond of these forested areas. They like more of the open landscapes. And so once all the deforestation started happening and people were ranching and citrus was a big thing and they started doing all these timber harvests, um, you know, it ended up with these more open landscapes, which the coyotes really prefer. And so essentially once all the land was being cleared, they were slowly expanding out. They also have what we refer to as a nonspecific food and habitat requirement. Essentially, that means they will eat anything and live anywhere, including right under your front porch. So they also have a large litter size. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I talk about the biology. And again, the decreased competition from the predators. As I mentioned before, they are here in Florida. They're actually now scientifically documented to be found in every single county in Florida. And the latest research from the information that I've seen in 2011, they were even established down in the Keys. And I've seen some more um, research on that, specifically in regards to them preying upon feral cat populations. And we're going to talk about that later on as well. So by a show of hands, raise your hand if you have seen a coyote in Pinellas County. OK, probably about half of you. Well, guess what? You are not alone. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a map from the Animal Services. If you haven't been on their website, they have a really informational um, page about the coyote. And they allow residents to report when and where they have seen a coyote. The different colors on this map are the different years. I think it started in 2008. The lime green dots are from this year. Now, it's important to note that none of these are verified sightings, but it's kind of hard to mistake a coyote for anything. You know, I mean, a dog, I suppose. But even if you were to eliminate half of these, you know, they're here. They're all over Pinellas County. So if you haven't seen one, it's only a matter of time before you will. So let's hop into some bi biology about the coyote. As I mentioned, they'll eat just about anything. They are considered omnivores, just like us. They'll eat meat as well as vegetation. They prey upon mostly small mammals, including young deer. Um, and they love fruit, insects. They'll even eat what we call carrion, which is essentially dead animals. Um, they love your garbage, and they love pet food. So <laughs> you can see there's lots of 
great resources here in Pinellas County for them. The adults can range anywhere between 25 to 40 pounds and off the ground, the shoulder height, it's anywhere between 20 to 22 inches. So, you know, to give you some idea, they're not too big, but not too small either. Um, if you come to Brooker Creek Preserve, we actually have a taxidermy coyote if you wanted to get a better idea to see um, their average size. The males are typically heavier and larger than the females. And I put over here, they're very smart. All of the research that I kept looking at were kept referring to how intelligent these animals are. So that also contributes to their success and survival. They're considered what we call crepuscular, and that is you know new word maybe for some of you. And it just essentially means that they're active at dawn and dusk, just like deer, right as the sun's coming up or before the sun's coming up, right before they're out, and after you're go going to bed or inside for the night is when they're coming out. They're really good hunters and survivors for um, many reasons, including their intelligence, but they have great eyesight, hearing, and sense of smell. So you can imagine those are all the ingredients for a successful hunter. Their home range, which is the area that they need to get all of the essential elements, so their food, water, and shelter. For, for us humans, if there was a CVS and a Publix, you know, within a half a mile of your house, your home range is a half a mile. So here it has two different home ranges showing the natural area home range of about 15 square miles, and the urban home range is about three. Can anyone tell me or give me a guess why they think the home range is smaller in an urban area. Anyone want to take a guess? Less open area. Less open area. Any other guesses? More food? Yeah. So kind of a combination of the two. So, you know, they can live right under your porch. If you put your garbage out every morning, they've got shelter, food, you got a pool or something, there's their water. You're, you know, if we're in Florida, it rains. So there's just a lot. Um, of their necessities right there in an urban area. The map on the right is from a coyote that was radio collared, and it showed that it actually dispersed over 40 miles. So, but that's not necessarily their home range. It's just showing that they can travel long distances. In terms of their breeding, they breed in late winter between February and March. And then their gestation period is two months. So they'll be having pups anywhere between April and May. So we, you know, relatively <laughs> just recently, they would have had some pups. Their litter size on average is about six pups, can be as little as two or as many as 12. And they're also keying into their intelligence factor. When they feel that their populations are dwindling or there's pressure, they actually will increase, the, their litter size increases. It's been scientifically proven. And that's one of the reasons that it's very difficult to eradicate the coyote. Not that we're trying to, but eff efforts in certain areas are difficult because they reproduce so quickly and are able to adjust in that way. And both parents do care for the young, which is pretty cool, I think. So how do you know if you've got one in your yard? Well, there, there's lots of things their prints can be confused with, but we'll try and narrow that down a little bit here. So this one right here on the top left is the coyote print. And the key thing to pay attention to is those top two claws. You can see here, note the center claws up here. For me, when I'm out at Brooker Creek Preserve, we have bobcats and coyotes. And I think those are the two hardest, you know, the two ones that are easily to get confused. But with cats, if any of you have a house cat, they have the retractable claws. So when they're walking, their claws aren't out. Um, and so there's not going to be any claw prints with a bobcat. Now, it's not to say in Florida we have very sandy soils. And so the, you know, the coyote claw tracks aren't always going to register. But just that's one way. Um, in general, it's a very narrow track compared to the others. You can see here, the, for the front paw, it's about two inches wide and two and a half inches long. So you can see how it would be more narrow there. Uh, the hind paw is a little bit smaller. And you can see here the, the strides. So if you had two and you could measure between them, that's one way to tell. The fox, in general, everything's a little bit smaller. And as I already mentioned, the bobcat, the claws don't show. Now, in terms of the 
coyote versus a dog. Again, you want to pay attention just to the narrow factor. Dog print is typically going to be a little bit more spread out, um, and probably all of the claws will be registering. Now, this is my favorite part. Poop. Who doesn't like poop? Coyote scat. It's very easy to identify because it's going to have all of the fur and hair from the prey that it's eating. Um, it's on average about four inches long and just going to be filled with hair. I was planning to pick some up for you guys to, to pass around today, but it was raining this morning and didn't really want to give you that sample. So <laughs> you can thank me later. <laughs> but anyways, um, you'll, you'll probably run across this all the time in the road. I was telling my intern who's here that all the time at Brooker Creek, we find it just in the entry and exit road, right on the road. So um, that's one indirect way to tell if you have a coyote in your yard or around your area. So what are the benefits of having coyotes here? Well, for someone like me who loves wildlife, um, it's the aesthetics of it. Getting to see a coyote for me is super exciting. Um, getting to hear a coyote is even cooler. And maybe now you guys will have a greater appreciation is that they're somewhat of a pest control for what we refer to as the meso predators. That just means the middle predators. So things like the raccoon, um, you know, feral cats or house cats, the fox, possums, all these things that we don't typically like. Um, so they'll prey upon those things and just help keep those levels in check. So in terms of cats, right, a lot of times when you hear about a coyote, it's, it ate my cat, right? That's typically what we associate it with. And that's true. I have no defense for the coyote there. But if it's outside and available to the coyote, then yes, he is going to prey upon the cat. Which has actually been highlighted to be a benefit in certain areas where the feral cat populations have been an issue. So the coyotes have actually been attracted to these areas. You know, it's like a candy store for a kid. They're just going to go there. It's free prey. Um, and the benefit is, if you've also heard about the downside to the feral cat populations that they prey upon a lot of the native bird species and they've actually been associated there's a lot of research on it but you know of actually classifying a certain amount of species as endangered um, as a direct result of predation by feral or domestic cats so you know I understand I'm totally a cat lover I love cats so I feel both ways but um, it is one form of control so what are the downsides to having coyotes? Well, there's lots of competition to think about. So in terms of them preying upon the deer, you know, everyone loves Bambi, so that's obviously going to be a top concern. Research has shown that there's not any significant um, downside to coyotes preying upon the deer populations. The populations haven't dropped or anything like that. Um, the habitat quality actually plays more of a role for the deer than the predation by the coyote. Now, competing with the Florida panther, that would obviously, you know, appear to be a big issue, right? The Florida panther, we love it. There's numbers are really small, um, but they occupy different niches. So the coyote, like I mentioned before, really likes that open habitat, whereas the panther prefers more of the forested areas. And the coyote tends, the pictures are hard to see, but the coyote tends to prey upon the fawns, the young deer, whereas the panthers will play, prey upon the mature deer. So they kind of occupy those different niches. So the competition really isn't that strong between those two. Now what about the bobcat, right? You can see here he's also preying upon a young deer. Um, but research has shown that although they live in similar areas, they tend to avoid each other. So right, it's like if you're all in, at a football game and it's the Gators, go Gators, versus the Seminoles, and they're all tailgating, you're not going to see the Gators going and hanging out with the Seminoles, right? So that's, that's kind of how the bobcats and the coyotes work it out. Um, and then in terms of the coyotes killing already threatened and endangered species, yes, that's true. That's also going to be the case for any animal. Um, but they also eat the predators of the things that are killing endangered species, like um, house cats killing the beach mice or raccoons eating sea turtle eggs. But I mentioned before that coyotes are a little bit difficult to control. But in small enough areas, if there's a specific issue, 
Like there actually was an issue with coyotes eating sea turtle eggs, and they were able to control and eradicate that population to a point where the sea turtles were able to make a full recovery and the coyotes kind of moved on elsewhere. So, can they breed with your pet dog? The answer is yes. Um, it is rare, but it's possible. Um, and they're what we refer to as koi dogs. And generally, the relationship's more of predator-prey. So the, the coyote's gonna be wanting to eat your dog. Um, and another reason is their breeding is out of sync. They don't typically occur around the same time. And I actually just changed this last bullet we were talking before my presentation. So when the two breed, a coyote and a dog, they can produce offspring, which is right here, this koi dog. And that koi dog can breed with another koi dog or, or you know, another dog or another coyote and produce offspring. Now the success of that offspring is, is not that good. <laughs> um, and I was just doing more. There's not a lot of research out about it, but in general, they're not going to, you know, establish a whole new population of koi dogs out there. Now, the genes from things like wolves and coyotes and dogs over time being interbred like this might have an effect, but those studies are, you know, just now kind of surfacing and being done. So the human conflict, what we're all worried about, right? Well. There's lots of things to worry about, which might not be an issue here in Pinellas County. Um, but for those of us that have ranches or farms and we've got some cattle, you can see here from this research study that was done, coyotes were by far the top predator on their cattle. And so it's a huge concern for those cattle ranchers that are out there. Um, and we're actually in the southeast, a very large contribution to the cattle industry. So it might not you know, be something you think about, but the cattle ranchers are definitely, definitely not fans of the coyotes. There's all the different things you hear and see in the newspapers. Um, there's you know, this one I pulled from Clearwater about them stocking pets and livestock. Um, Coyote, the newest resident at Largo's Bayou Club. So you know, they're here, the newspaper's picking up on it, we're picking up on it. And um, you know, what do we really need to be concerned about? Disease is a possible thing that you do need to be concerned about. Um, I'll tell you why it's not too much of a concern in the next slide, but they are and have been documented to have rabies, um, which can be transmitted to you and I, humans, and your pets or livestock. And they're host to a variety of parasites, just like you, know, you get your dogs and cats treated for heartworm and all these different things. Same with the coyote, except we're not gonna be treating them because they're not our pets. <laughs> so the reality is that Coyotes pose much higher risk for your pet than they do to people. Um, and it's an easy problem to fix. That's the good news, you know, by keeping your pets indoors and paying attention to when you're walking your dog. So you can see here, this is typically the interaction as opposed to them breeding. <laughs> and typically when they do become an issue, it's because they've been habituated by us. Right? We think it's so cool, and I agree, you know, if we get to feed a deer, or feed a coyote, or feed an alligator, it's cool, but you know, the next guy that comes along that gets bit by that thing that you just fed doesn't think it's so cool. So um, by avoiding this kind of interaction of humans and people, we can keep these from being an issue. Um, and you can see there was another study that was done in Chicago where coyotes are abundant which, you know, that's a very, very big city. And they did a radio collar study and not a single attack was reported over the several years of the study. And they did some uh, analysis of the food and that it was about less than 2% of human related food was in their diet, which is a good thing. It means that people were not feeding the coyotes. So putting it into perspective for you, if I was you, I'd be much more scared of a dog than I would be a coyote. And here's why. 3.5 bites per year documented and reported for coyotes, as opposed to 5 million bites per year with a dog. And in terms of fatalities, two fatalities over 46 years for a coyote, 181 in five years by a dog. Just to put it into perspective. <laughs> so 
just in case, what are some solutions that you can do to avoid negative interactions with the coyote? We're going to watch a little video, which will be quite entertaining. This video was made by a colleague in Manatee County. <laughs> The urban coyote is not a new animal in Florida. What welcomes the coyote to our neighborhoods? In the wild, coyotes have a large variety of food to choose from. Birds and their eggs, small animals like rats and rabbits, wild piglets, and did you know that armadillos have a soft, tender belly? If the coyote can get to it before it rolls up. They will even raid the farmer's field full of watermelon. With all these food resources, what is it that attracts the coyote to our busy community? Let's get the perspective of a coyote and see what appeals to them. Ellie here, Ellie the coyote. And this is my new little habitat that I'm looking to find food. Let's come out of the shrubs and see what these humans left for me. Oh yes, the trash. We love trash left out at night time for the garbage man tomorrow. Okay, up. Oh, what is in here? Yummy, trash is left open. Uh, uh. Okay, I've got the trash can open. Let's explore. Oh, jambalai, fish bones, that means fish bones, chicken bones, all kinds of goods. Property number two. Let's go up to this drive and see. I smell something rotten. Let's explore what that could possibly be. Oh, yes. Mangoes. Somebody has left the fallen fruit for me to chow. Oh, looks like my little friend the squirrel got to this one. Let me keep on going. Let me look in this bush. Oh, I hear somebody coming. Quick, let me hide again. I love shrubs to hide in. They're a good cover for me, especially when the homeowners don't prune them back. All right, the coast is clear. Let me head on down the road here and see what I can find next. Look at this homeowner. She doesn't know to keep her little yummy moss so close to her. When pets are out on leashes that far away from them, I can just snatch them right up. We coyotes tend to be a little bit lazy if we can, so let's look for a little easier of a prey here. Well, hello, domestic putty cat. One of my favorite morsels when they're left outdoors. Feral cats taste just as delicious, too. Well, honey child, you just don't seem to be afraid of me. Let me get a little bit closer. Hey, wait a minute. Don't take off. I have not been able to eat you yet. Stop! Oh, last stop, that food dish. I love outdoor pet food dishes. Don't like that big dog, though. Okay, outdoor shed. It's time for me to seek comfort for the night. Let me start digging. Oh, this is way too hard to dig here. Let me try somewhere else. Oh, how divine. That's much, much better. Let me go underneath of this porch. There's much more area for me to go. And I could even have my little pups born under here. How perfect. Goodbye. These clips were created to have an awareness of the coyote's behavior and to understand what attracts coyotes into a rural area. The intent was not to make fun of the coyotes, nor the residents in the clips. If we want the coyote to stay wild and eat in the wild, we must be aware of our own behavior, make some adjustments to discourage the coyote, and learn to live in harmony with them. They are not going anywhere. Okay, so from that video and from things I've told you, obviously something that's somewhat obvious but very tempting for us to do is to feed the coyotes, but we never want to feed coyotes or any wild animal if you can try to avoid that temptation. It only leads um, ultimately to that animal having to be killed because it eventually gets a complaint and is considered a nuisance and then has to be killed because of us indirectly, essentially. So um, preventing access to your garbage and pet food. You saw in there 
you know, the garbage was there, it was open, the pet food was there. So they do make special lids for your garbage can or if you can ensure at least you have a lid on there um, and just keeping your pet food in uh, at least at night. Um, that can help prevent coyotes from coming to your yard. Keeping your cats indoors um, and watching out for your small dogs. You saw both of those in the video as well. Um, if you do come across a coyote, the advice is to basically act like a crazy person and wave your arm, shout, act aggressive to frighten the coyotes away. So you, want, you don't want to be like, oh, cool, it's a coyote. Like, let me see how, cool, how close he can get to me or anything like that because then that just only the next time brings that interaction even closer. So the more you can instill a fear in the coyotes, the better. Um, and if it does approach and you have small children or pets, just pick them up and then and then you can go on acting crazy to scare them away. So who should you contact if you do have a problem? The FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, does have a list of nuisance wildlife trappers. The FWC themselves are not going to come out and capture the coyote. There are people that are licensed or registered to do this. And there's a list by county of people that are available to do that. So, Basically, if you go to this website, it's just myfwc.com forward slash trappers. It'll bring you to this site. It talks about all different ways for a variety of animals that they can be removed. Um, and then if you scroll to the bottom, there's this link for the nuisance wildlife trappers. And you can see here, wildlife trapper list. And then it pulls up a list. You select your county, and it'll give you this huge list of, of folks that you can contact. So, in summary, there's some good, there's some bad, and there's some ugly associated with the coyote, right? But, you know, they're just trying to make it in the world just like we are. You know, they've ha expanded their range naturally. They've settled into this urban area. Obviously, you know, back in the day and when they were out west, they weren't in urban areas because they didn't really exist back in the day. So, they're just trying to make it just like we are. And... It just so happens that we have all the resources they need, even in a highly populated area. So if you guys want additional information on the coyote, the FWC does have a really good website, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Um, also, the University of Florida, we have what are called EDIS publications, and they're um, essentially research that's been done, and they kind of translated into languages that we can understand. So there's a, a document out there about the coyote, which is where I got a lot of my information for this presentation, um, as well as Pinellas County Animal Services website. And they have links to a lot of these things that I've mentioned as well. So if you just Google or you know, do whatever web search, um, Pinellas County coyotes, the first thing it'll prop up is probably the Animal Services website. And it's very good. There's lots of information on there. So I do appreciate your time. Um, this is right here on the left, a coyote print that I found at Brooker Creek Preserve. You can see right up here, it might be difficult to see the two top tracks that registered. Um, you know, without those, I would have been like, oh, it's a bobcat, for sure, bobcat. So, um, and again, just remember, coyotes are trying to make it just like we are. We need to learn to live with all of the wildlife that we have interactions with. Just so you know, if you're into Facebook and Twitter, I do have a Facebook and Twitter account for work. Um, Brooker Creek Preserve as a whole has a Facebook page. Um, and then me as a natural resources extension agent, I have um, a Facebook page as well as a Twitter account if you're interested in staying up to date on all natural resources in our county. If you guys have any questions about coyotes or anything wildlife or natural resource related, you can find my contact information on the Pinellas County Extension website. So thank you for your time, and I'll be around if you have questions later.